Hello everyone. We are once again back in our video series where we are providing the solutions to the questions given in the exercises of Arihant's book. So uh, we have uh, covered the two exercises of sequence and series chapter. So today we are going to start the next exercise, exercise number three. So uh, let's proceed. So here comes the exercise three, question number one. The fourth, seventh and last term of GPR, 1080 and 2560 respectively. The first term and the number of terms in GPR. Okay. So let's proceed with the given information. It is given that the fourth term is 10. Okay. So a fourth term is 10. The seventh term is 80 and the last term or we can say the nth term is 2560. Okay, so uh, since this uh, series is in uh, GP, let's consider it as A, AR, AR square up to AR raised to power n minus 1. So we can consider these terms in GP. So as per given information, the fourth term is 10. So what will be the fourth term? The fourth term will be A R Q. A R raised to power 3 is equal to 10. And the seventh term, the seventh term will be A into R raised to power 6 is equal to 80. So uh, substituting the value of R Q in this uh, second equation, let's consider this as equation 1 and this as equation 2. So uh, we can write, rewrite the uh, equation two as a into r cube whole squared is equal to 80. So a into r cube can be replaced by 10 by a. 10 by a square is equal to 80. From here, we will get the value of a. So this will be a into 100 by a square is equal to 80. Or 1a will be cancelled out and a will be 100 upon 80. That is nothing but 5 by 4. So we got the value of a. What is a? a is the first term of this GP. So uh, since we got the value of a, we can easily uh, derive the value of r also. So put the value of a in equation 1. It will be 5 by 4 r cube is equal to 10. From here, we will get r cube is equal to 10 into 4 by 5. So this is nothing but 8. So r comes out to be 2. Okay. So we have uh, find out the value of a and r. Now it's turn to find the value of n. So use this information. Our nth term is equal to 2560. So uh, nth term of a GP is given by a r raised to power n minus 1 and this is equal to 2, 5, 6, 0. So put the value of a and r in this. So uh, this will be 5 by 4, 2 raised to power n minus 1 is equal to 2, 5, 6, 0. It will become 2 raised to power n minus 1 equal to 2, 5, 6, 0 into 4 upon 5. Cancel out this. 5, 1, 2. So 2 raised to power n minus 1 is equal to 4, 2, 0, 8, 4, 2, 0, 4, 8. So this 2, 0, 4, 8 can be written as 2 raised to power 11. Right? So n minus 1 is equal to 11. From here, we get the value of n as 12. So total number of terms in the given progression is 12. So the first term and the number of terms. So the first term is 5 by 4 and the number of terms is 12. So option number C, option number C is correct. Okay, so let's move forward to the next question. What is our next question? Okay. Question number two is saying that if the first and the nth terms of a GP are A and B respectively, and if P is the product 
of the first n terms, then p square is equal to. Okay. So it is saying that p is the product of first n terms. So let's consider the GP as a a r a r square a r q dot 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 up to nth term that will be a r raised to power sorry <coughs> a r raised to power n minus 1 so this is our product p now the question is asking to find the value of p square okay so if you see this p can be simply written as a raised to power n since there are total n terms and r raised to power 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n minus 1 right so this can be further simplified as a raised to power n into r what will be this sum 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n minus 1 this will be nothing but n n plus 1 by 2. So it will become this minus 1 plus 1 will be cancelled out. This will become n into n minus 1 upon 2. So r raised to power n, n minus 1 upon 2. So this is our p. Now the question is asking to find the value of p squared. So uh, let's square it on both hand sides it will become a raised to power 2n into r raised to power n into n minus 1. Now we can further rewrite as a raised to power n sorry a square into r raised to power n minus 1 whole raised to power n right. So further we can split this a square as a into a r raised to power n minus 1 whole raised to power n and uh, this can be written as a into this a r raised to power n can be written as b because the nth term is given as b. So this will become a into b raised to power n. So this will be our value of p square. So this is our answer a b raised to power n so option c is correct so this question is done let's move to the next question question number three it is saying if a1 a2 a3 are three successive terms of a gp with common ratio r the value of r for which a3 is greater than 4a2 minus 3a1. Okay. So a3 should be greater than 4a2 minus 3a1. Okay. And a1, a2, 3, uh, a1, a2, a3 are the three successive terms of a GP. Okay. So a3 can be written as a1 into r square this should be greater than 4 into a2 a2 can be written as a1 into r minus 3 a1 now we can divide uh, this left hand side and uh, 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 both sides we can divide both sides by a1 since a1 is positive okay and the equality sign will remain same so divide uh, both sides by a1 it will become r square is greater than 4r minus 3. Let's take this thing to the uh, left hand side. It will become r square minus 4r plus 3 greater than 0. So this is quadratic in r and we have to uh, find the value of r which will satisfy this inequality. So let's factorize this. Let's, let's factorize this uh, uh, quadratic equation. So it will become r square minus 3r minus r plus 3 greater than 0. Taking r common from the first two terms, it will become r minus 3 minus 1, r minus 3 greater than 0. 
So R minus 1 into R minus 3 greater than 0. Now we have to find the solution set for this. So uh, this is an inequality. So uh, first let's draw the critical point. So critical points are 1 and 3. So for the values R greater than 3, this whole thing will be positive. For the value between 1 and 3, it will be negative. And for R less than 1, both these uh, factors will become negative and overall it will be positive. So the value of R ranges from minus infinity to 1 union 3 to infinity. Or the same thing can be written as R less than 1 or R greater than 3. So this is our solution set. R less than 1 or R is greater than 3. So option C is correct for this question. Hope this is clear to everyone. So uh, let's take the next question. Question number 4. Question number four is saying, if x, 2x plus 2, 3x plus 3 are in GP, then the fourth term is, okay, it's looking simple only, x, 2x plus 2, and 3x plus 3, these terms are in GP. So we have to find the next term or fourth term. So, since these uh, terms are in GP, so 2x plus 2 upon x should be equal to 3x plus 3 upon 2x plus 2. This is nothing but common ratio. We can write common ratio as 2x plus 2 upon x. We can write common ratio as 3x plus 3 upon 2x plus 2 and uh, these uh, both these are equal. So, cross multiplying we will get 2x plus 2 whole square is equal to x into 3x plus 3. So let's open it. This will become 4x square plus 4 plus 8x is equal to 3x square 3x square plus 3x. Right? So uh, let's take everything on one side. It will become x square plus 8x minus 3x, it will become 5x plus 5x plus 4 is equal to 0. So we can further split the middle term and factorize it. It will become x square plus 4x plus x plus 4 is equal to 0. Taking x common, it will become x plus 4 plus 1, x plus 4 is equal to 0. So x plus 1 into x plus 4 is equal to 0. From here, we are getting the two values of x. x is equal to minus 1 or x is equal to minus 4. So these two values we are getting. x is equal to minus 1 or x equal to minus 4. But what the question is asking? Question is asking for the fourth term. Okay. So let's, let's take x equal to minus 1. When x is minus 1, what will these terms become? It will become minus 1, comma, 2 into minus 1, minus 2, plus 2, 0. And the third term will become 3 into minus 3, plus 3, 0. So uh, actually, this is not in GP. Because in GP, no terms can be uh, equal to 0. So x equal to minus 1 is rejected x equal to minus 1 is rejected. Now let's take x is equal to uh, minus 4. So taking x as minus 4, our terms will become minus 4 comma 2 into minus 4 will be minus 8 plus 2 that will become minus 6. 3 into minus 4 will be minus 12 plus 3 means minus 9. Yeah, this is in GP. So now we have to uh, find the fourth term. So uh, what will be our fourth term? So let's find R first. 
So R will be minus 6 upon minus 4. This will become 3 upon 2. So our fourth term will be R into third term or this 3 by 2 into third term. Our third term is minus 9. So this will become minus 27 upon 2. This is nothing but minus 13.5. So this is our fourth term, minus 13.5. So option D is correct. Option D is correct for this question. <clears throat> so it's done. Now we can move ahead to the next question, question number five. Okay. This is our question number five. It is saying in a sequence of 21 terms, the first 11 terms are in AP with common difference two. And the last 11 terms are in GP with the common ratio two. If the middle term of AP is equal to the middle term of GP, the middle term of the entire sequence is okay. So let's create one sequence that is a1, A2, A3 up to A11, then this will go up to 21 terms. So our 21 is term. So this is our sequence. Now the question is saying that the first 11 terms are in AP. So these first 11 terms are in AP with common difference of 2 and it is also stating that the last 11 terms so last 11 terms means what it will start from a11 and it will go up to a21 so this last 11 terms are in gp and for which the common ratio is 2 so this is the given information and one more thing is given the middle term of this ap the middle term of the AP is equal to the middle term of GP. So what will be the middle term of this AP? Like total terms are 11. So I am considering only this uh, first 11 terms of AP. So total terms are 11. So our middle term will be sixth one. Our middle term will be sixth one. This will be the middle term for this AP. And uh, how can we represent this sixth term? sixth term can be represented as a1 plus 5d and what is d for this ap d is 2 for this ap so a6 we can write a6 as a1 plus t this will be our sixth term of the or uh, the mid middle term of the ap now what will be the middle term of this gp look this a11 this 11th term will be actually the uh, first term of the GP, right? This 11th term will be the first term of the GP. And similarly, here also the total number of terms are 11. So the 16th term, so 16th term will be the middle term of AP. Like this middle term of GP, this will be, this will be the 16th term right so a 16th and how can we write a 16th this we can write as a 11th is the starting term and the common ratio common ratio r raised to power 5 okay so our 16th uh, a 16th or the middle term of gp will be equal to a 11 and r is given to so it will be into 2 raised to power 5 so this will be our middle term of gp <clears throat> now question is saying that both these terms are equal right both these terms are equal so we can equate this so equating this 
both these terms, we get a1 plus 10 is equal to a11 into 2 raised to power uh, 5, we can write it as 32. Okay. Now, can we find the value of uh, this A11? Yeah, we can find because this is the last term of the AP. This is this this is the last term of the AP. So we can write this A11 in terms of A1 so that we can find the value of A1. So this will become A1 plus 10 is equal to and what will be the A11? A11 will be A1 plus 10D. 10D means what? 20. So A1 plus 20 plus 32. Uh, am I doing something wrong or what? Okay, okay, okay. This will not be plus. This will be multiplication sign. Right? So this A1 will be written as A1 plus 20 multiplied by 32. Multiplied by 32. So we get uh, A1 plus 10 is equal to 32 A1 plus 32 into 2, 64, 640. From here, we get the value of A1 as this will become 31A, let it write completely, 31A is equal to 10 minus 640, that will be minus 630, okay. From here we get A1 as minus 630 upon 31. So this is our first term, this is our first term. Now. Uh, we got the first term of the sequence. Okay, now what we have to find? We have to find the middle term of the entire sequence. Okay, so for entire sequence, the middle term will be this A11, right? Middle term of the entire sequence will be A11 and A11 is nothing but A1 plus 10 times T. So A1 we uh, got this is minus 630 upon 31 plus 10D is nothing but 20. So simplify it. It will become 31. This minus 630 plus 31 into 2 will be 62. So this will become 620. So finally we get minus 10 upon 31. So this will be a11 and A11 is the middle term of the entire sequence. So this will be our final answer. Minus 10 upon 31. Option A. Option A is correct. Okay. So we are done with this question also. Let's have a look to the next question. Question number 6. It is saying three distinct numbers x, y, z form a GP in the order that the number 7x plus 5y, 7y plus 5z, 7z plus 5x form an AP. The common ratio of GP is okay. So it is saying that x, y, z form a GP. So let's write it x, y, z is in GP. And these numbers, 7x plus 5y, 7x plus 5y, comma, 7y plus 5z, 7y plus 5z, comma, 7z plus 5x, these terms are in AP. Now we have to find the value of common ratio of this GP. Okay. So since these three terms are in uh, AP, we can write it, we can write it as 7y plus 5z minus 7x minus 5y. This is the value of D. 
we can write it as d equal to this and this is nothing but third term minus second term so this will be 7z plus 5x minus 7y minus 5z so from here we get 7y minus 5y it will become 2y 2y plus 5z minus 7x is equal to 7z minus 5z will be 2z plus 5x minus 7y. So take all the uh, terms to one side. We will get this 2y plus 7y. It will become 9y. 5z minus 2z. It will become 3 plus of 3z. Then minus 7x minus 5x. That will become minus 12x is equal to 0. Now we... It is divisible by 3, I think. So we can write it as 3y plus z minus 4x is equal to 0. So what we have to find actually? We have to find the value of common ratio of GP. Okay. So what will be common ratio of this GP? Common ratio of this GP will be, we can write it as y upon x. Or we can write it as z upon y. This will be the common ratio for this GP. Okay. So let's divide this equation by y. So it will become 3 plus z upon y minus 4 times x upon y. This will be equal to 0. Now z upon y is nothing but our common ratio that is r. This is nothing but r. And what is this x by y? This x by y is actually 1 by r. Right? So I am taking this to this side. 3 plus 2 upon z upon y is r. So 3 plus r minus 4 by r is equal to 0. So let's solve it. It will become 3r plus r square minus 4 is equal to 0. Or 3 square, uh, sorry, r square plus 3r minus 4 is equal to 0. Further, we can simplify it as plus 4r minus r minus 4 equal to 0. Taking r common, r plus 4 minus 1, r plus 4 equal to 0. So r minus 1 multiplied by r plus 4 is equal to 0. From here, we are having two values of r. r is equal to 1 or r is equal to minus 4. r equal to 1 or r equal to minus 4. So, there is no 1 in the option. So, uh, we will go with the option A. That is minus 4. So, minus 4 is correct answer for this. Okay. So, this question is done. Now, let's move to the next one. Question number 7. The sum of n terms of the series, okay, one series is given here, 11 plus 103 plus 1005 plus dot dot dot. This is going up to infinity, no, this is going up to n terms and we have to find the this sum of n terms, okay. So, this 11 uh, can be written as 10 plus 1. And this 103 can be written as 10 square plus 3. Similarly, this can 1005 can be written as 10 cube plus 5. Now, this series will go up to uh, n terms in the similar fashion. So, let's write it separately. So we can write it as 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 up to n terms. 
and 10 plus 10 square plus 10 cube plus 10 raised to power 4. This is also going up to n terms. So we know the value of the first n odd numbers that is equal to I think n square. Okay, let's uh, uh, we can uh, find the value also. So n terms, so, so what will be the sum? It will be n by 2 2 times of first term 2a plus n minus 1 into d. d is 2 here. And what will be this? This is a gp with common ratio 10. And the first term is first term is 10. First term is 10 and the common ratio is also 10. So we can uh, write this sum as a r raised to power n r raised to power n minus 1 upon r minus 1. Okay. So this will become n square I know because this plus 2 minus 2 will get cancelled out. This will become 2n in the bracket it will become 2n. So this will become 2n square upon 2 plus 10 into 10 raised to power n minus 1 upon 9. So this will be our answer. 10 by 9, 10 raised to power n minus 1 plus n square. Yeah. Option C. Option C is correct. So let's move to the next question. Question number 8. And increasing GP, the sum of the first and the last term is 66. The product of the second and the last but one means the product of the second and second last one is 128. And the sum of the terms is 126. So let's collect the information first, what it is given in the question. The sum of the first and the last term. So uh, let's assume uh, GP first. So our traditional GP A A R A R square up to A R raised to power n minus one. Okay. So we have considered total n terms. So the sum of the first and the last term, like this, A plus A r raised to power n minus 1 is equal to 66. This is the first information we got. The product of the second and the sec last but one, I think this means second last only. So the product of the second, what is the second term? This is a r into second last one. What will be the second last one term? That will be a r raised to power n minus 2. So a r into a r raised to power n minus 2 is given as 128. This is the second information we got. And what is the third information? The sum of the terms is 126. So what is the sum of this GP? Sum of this GP can be given as a into r raised to power n minus 1 upon r minus 1. This is given to be 126. So these three informations we are provided with. And what are the unknowns here? If we see A, R and N. Okay. So three unknowns, three equations. So definitely we can get a solution from this set of informations. But how to retrieve it? Uh, Let's check it out. Mm. Okay. Let's go ahead with this equation 2. Let's go ahead with this equation 2. So from equation 2, we can see uh, A is square. We are rewriting the uh, this equation 2. So A into A, A is square r raised to power n minus 2 into 
r this will become r raised to power n minus 1 and this is equal to 128 so from here we can get r raised to power n minus 1 as 128 upon a square now we can use this thing we can use this value of r raised to power n minus 1 in the equation 1 so putting this value in equation 1 what we will get whether we have write it wrote it correctly or not the sum of the first term and the last term the first term is a last term is a r raised to power n minus 1 that is 66 okay let's try it out so this will become putting the value of this in equation 1 we will get a plus a into okay 128 upon a square is equal to 66 mm, it's working so a one times a will be cancelled out it will become a square a square plus 128 is equal to 66 a so let's take this 66a to the left hand side it will become a square minus 66a plus 128 is equal to 0. So we can split this middle term 64 into 2 yeah. So a square minus 64a uh, minus 64a minus 2a plus 128 is equal to 0. Take a common from here it will become a minus 64 take minus 2 common from here it will become a minus 64 is equal to 0 a minus 2 into a minus 64 is equal to 0 from here we are getting the two values of a either a is equal to 2 or a is equal to 64 these two values we are getting <clears throat> a is equal to 2 or a is equal to 64 okay so uh, let's check it so we know from here we know r raised to power n minus 1 so r raised to power n minus 1 is equal to 128 upon a square now when a is equal to 64 we will get r raised to power n minus 1 is equal to 128 upon a square that means 64 into 64 this will go two times this will become 1 upon 32 And if we take a is equal to 2, this r raised to power n minus 1 will be equal to 128 upon 2 into 2. So, 4, 3, 2. So, r raised to power n minus 1 will become 32 when, when a is equal to 2 and when a is equal to 64, it is becoming 1 upon 32. But one thing we have to notice here, it is an increasing GP, right? The question is saying it is an increasing GP. So if it is increasing GP, R must be greater than 1. But from here, we are getting R less than 1 when we are putting a equal to 64 so this implies that r is less than 1 so this option is we have to reject this one so a is 2 this is confirmed that a is 2 this is the accepted value now if a is equal to 2 uh, we are having r raised to power n minus 1 as 32 
What are the other informations we are provided with? So, we have not utilized this third equation yet. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, take this third equation in the rule. So third equation is saying a into r raised to power n minus 1 upon r minus 1 is equal to 126. Okay. <clears throat> so we can write, uh, so put this a equal to 2 here. We will get 2 into r raised to power n. r raised to power n can be written as, from this we can write r raised to power n upon r. This will become r raised to power n minus 1. This is equal to 32. So r raised to power n can be written as, uh, we can write r raised to power n as 32r. So, replace r raised to power n by 32r minus 1 upon r minus 1 is equal to 126. We are getting something. Okay. From here, we can find the value of r. So, this will become 63. So, 32R minus 1 is equal to 63R minus 63, right? <clears throat> so, it will become 63R minus 32, 32, 42, 52, 62, 31R. 31R is equal to 63 minus 1, 62. So, R from here we get R as 2. So we got the value of A. We got the value of R also. A is also equal to 2 and R is also equal to 2. Now what else we have to find? We have to find the value of N. Right? The number of terms in the series. So let's utilize this equation. R raised to power N minus 1. From here if you see. Let me go downward. So, okay, I'm changing the color of the uh, pin. R raised to power n minus 1 is equal to 128 upon a square. Now we know the value of R and a. So put that. It will become 2 raised to power n minus 1 is equal to 128 upon a square. a square means 4. So this will become 4, 3, 2. So uh, 2 raised to power n minus 1 is equal to 32. We can write it as 2 raised to power 5 or n minus 1 is equal to 5. So n equal to 6. So, total number of terms in the given progression is 6. This will be our answer. N equal to 6. Whether, yeah, option A. It's given in the option A. So, option A is correct for this. So, this question was a bit uh, lengthy. But, okay, we have done it. Now, let's move to the next question. This is board number 8, no? So, I have to go to board number 9. Okay. 
here we are. Hmm. If S1, S2, S3 be respectively the sum of n, 2n and 3n terms of a GP, then the value of this expression S1 into S3 minus S2 divided by S2 minus H1 whole squared. Okay. So what is S1? S1 is sum up to n terms. Okay. What is S2? S2 is sum up to 2n terms. And S3 is sum up to 3n terms. So we have to find the value of this S1 multiplied by S3 minus S2 upon S2 minus H1 whole squared. Okay. I think this question mechanical type like, let's say let's calculate we have to do work on this s1 s1 sum of n terms so sum of n terms of a gp we can write it as a into r raised to power n minus 1 upon r minus 1 this is uh, sum up to n terms what will be the S3? S3 is sum up to 3n terms. So it will be A, A is the uh, starting term of the GP. Okay. So it will be uh, common. So A into R. R will be also common because this is the same GP. So R raised to power, only difference will be in the power of R. That is R raised to power n, total number of terms. It will be 3n here r raised to power 3n minus 1 upon r r minus 1 and similarly a into r raised to power 2n minus 1 upon r minus 1 and what is there in the denominator it is s2 means a into r raised to power 2n minus 1 upon r minus 1 minus s1 a into r raised to power n minus 1 upon r minus 1 and this total ka whole square right okay so do we can do one thing mm. a into r raised to power n minus 1 upon r minus 1 now uh, Let's take A upon R minus 1 common from these two terms. Okay. So this will become A upon R minus 1. And in bracket, it will be R raised to power 3N uh, minus 1 minus of R raised to power 2N plus 1. Right. Similarly, take a by r minus 1 common from this. So it will become r raised to power 2n minus 1 minus r raised to power n plus 1. And this will be a square. So we can see here these things will be cancelled. This a by r minus 1, this, this. This is nothing but a square by r minus 1 whole square. So these things got cancelled. So we are left out with we are left out with r raised to power n minus 1 here this minus 1 plus will be, uh, 1 will be cancelled. Similarly, this minus 1 plus 1 will be cancelled. This will become r raised to power 3n minus r raised to power 2n divided by r raised to power 2n minus r raised to power n. So we can do one thing. We can take uh, r raised to power 2n common from this bracket 
and uh, from denominator we can take r raised to power n common so let's take it r raised to power n minus 1 if we take r raised to power 2 in common from here it will become r raised to power n minus 1 right and if we take r raised to power n common from here it will become r raised to power n minus 1 okay whether i have done something wrong 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 okay these things this square will come no so if we take r raised to power n common here it will be 2n and this will be square so r raised to power n minus 1 r raised to power n minus 1 two times in the uh, numerator this will be cancelled and this r raised to power 2n and this r raised to power 2n will also be cancelled so this will become 1 finally so it was earlier looking a bit so much what you say difficult but finally we got uh, rid of it and we got answer as 1. So option A, option A is correct for this. <coughs> so we are done with this question number 9. Let's move ahead with question number 10. So question number 10, if mod A is less than 1 and mod B is less than 1, then the sum of series. Okay, one series is given and we have to find the sum of that. So series is 1 plus 1 plus A multiplied by B plus 1 plus A plus A square multiplied by B square plus 1 plus a plus a square plus a cube multiplied by b cube and this is going up to infinity right because dot 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 is in continued fashion today so we have to find the sum of this series so what can we do let's open the bracket first and see what we are getting. So this will become 1 plus B plus AB plus B square plus AB square plus A square B square plus B cube plus AB cube plus uh, A square B cube plus e cube b cube plus dot 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 so whether we are getting anything convenient i don't know <clears throat> so 1 plus b plus b square okay let uh, Let's write it as 1 plus. Now take the uh, terms having only b. So we will get this b. We will get this one we have already taken. So this b, b square, b cube and further it will be b uh, 4 also. So b plus b square plus b cube plus dot 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 it will go up to infinity now now take the terms which are having a so if we take that then this we will cover a b a b square then a b q okay so this will become b plus b square plus b cube plus dot 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 up to infinity now similarly take the terms having a square 
So a square, we are having this thing. This thing, a square, then this thing. Okay, so first term is having b square, then b cube. And it will continue in the similar fashion. Similarly, uh, the terms with a cube with all will also come. And seeing the pattern, I can realize that it will be having the terms b cube plus b4 plus b raised to power 5 within the bracket. Similarly, a raised to power 4 will be having b raised to power 4 plus b raised to power 5 plus b raised to power 6. And this series will go on. Right. So what can we do further? Mm. This is a GP. And we are given that mod B and mod A are less than 1. So this is the sum of GP uh, for infinite terms. It will become the sum of GP up to infinite terms A upon 1 minus R. Okay. So what is A here? Means first term is B and 1 minus R. And the common ratio is also B. So this we got from here. From here, what we will get, this is also some up to infinity terms. The common ratio is this. So, this first term is B and common ratio is also B. So, this will be 1 minus B. Similarly, this A square and B square upon 1 minus B plus A cube into b cube upon 1 minus b plus dot 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 this will go so what we are getting now so this will be 1 plus b upon 1 minus b let it be as it is i think i am able to see something in all these terms i am taking 1 upon 1 minus b common. So, it, what will be remaining terms? What will remain in the bracket? It will be a b plus a square b square plus a cube b cube plus this will continue up to infinite terms. Right. So, 1 plus b upon 1 minus b plus 1 upon 1 minus b and we can uh, write this sum of infinite terms of this GP, GP as a b upon 1 minus what is the common ratio here a b after simplifying this take 1 minus b and 1 minus a b as LCM. So this will become 1 minus B into 1 minus AB plus B into 1 minus AB plus AB. So let's open the bracket. It will be 1 minus AB minus B plus AB square plus b minus a b square plus a b upon 1 minus b into 1 minus a b. So minus b plus b got cancelled a b square minus a b square minus a b plus a b cancelled. So we are left with 1 upon 1 minus b into 1 minus a b. Whether this is there in the option or not, let's check it out. 1 upon 1 minus b, 1 minus a b, 1 minus b, 1 minus a b, yeah, it is there, option c is correct, option c is correct for this question. So, I don't know, uh, I approached through this method, if 
anyone have some alternative or any shortcut method please uh, come to me and like we can discuss on that okay so uh, let's close this question here only uh, so let's move to the uh, next one question number 11 okay It is saying if the sides of a triangle are in GP and its larger angle is twice the smallest, then the common ratio R satisfies the inequality. Okay. So, uh, triangle is there. So triangles have uh, three sides and uh, for considering three numbers in GP, we prefer taking A by R, A and A by R, uh, sorry, A R. So here uh, we assume that A by R, like the, let's assume this side as A by R, this side as A R and this as A. So we can do that and what then the common ratio R satisfies the inequality. Okay, let's consider A by R as the smallest side. The smallest side and this A R as the largest side. So, uh, since A by R is the smallest, so angle opposite to it will be less, right? So, if I am taking this as theta and angle opposite to this A R, since this is the largest side we have considered, so it will become 2 theta, right? Its larger angle is twice the smallest, so it will become 2 theta. Now we have to find the value of R. So we can apply sign rule for this uh, triangle that is A by R upon sine theta is equal to A R upon sine 2 theta. So uh, this will become A by R sin 2 theta is equal to A R into sin theta. So this I am cancelling this A with A it will become sorry so R square will become sin 2 theta upon sin theta. Now uh, we can write sin 2 theta as 2 sin theta cos theta upon sin theta. So uh, cancelling this we get R square is equal to 2 cos theta. So we got R square as 2 times of cos theta. Now the maximum value of cos theta can be 1. But uh, cos theta, we get cos theta 1 at theta is equal to 0 degree. So theta uh, cannot be equal to 0 degree since it is an angle of a triangle. So theta can't be equal to 0 degree. So R square should be always less than 2 right so r must be less than root 2 so r maximum we can say r maximum must be less than root 2 now uh, while considering this right while considering this sides of the triangle r must be greater than 1 why 
because if uh, suppose we consider r less than 1 suppose we take r is equal to half so what will be the our sides our sides will become a upon 1 by 2 a and a into 1 upon 2 that is 2a a and a by 2 but we have uh, assumed that this is the smallest side but now it is becoming like largest side so our assumption will be uh, wrong so hence r must be greater than 1 so uh, where should r lie r should lie between 1 and root 2 so this will be the range of r this will be the range of r r must be within r must be greater than 1 but less than root 2 so option b is correct option b is correct for this question <clears throat> so we are done with this let's take the next question it is saying if a x cube plus b x square plus c x plus t is divisible by a x square plus c then a, B, C, D are in A, P, G, P or H, P or none of these. Okay. So it is saying that A, X cube plus B, X square plus C, X plus T, it is divisible by A, X square plus C. Right. Divisible means what? It is completely divisible. Means remainder will be zero in this case. So let's divide it by our uh, long division method. So take x. So it will become a x cube plus c x. So plus c x. Now let's subtract it. It will become zero. B x square will come as it is. It will become zero. And b x square plus t will remain. <coughs> now. Uh, what we can do, we can take it as b upon a, b upon a, right? Then only yes, yes. So b upon a. So b upon a into x square will be. Uh, let me write this side. B upon a into a x square plus b upon a into c. So it will become b x square, b x square, this a will be cancelled and b c upon a plus b c upon a. Let's subtract it. So this will be cancelled. It will become d minus b c upon a. Now, uh, this is the remainder, right? But remainder should be zero here. Because question is saying this that this cubic polynomial is divisible by this a x square plus uh, c. So since this remainder must be equal to zero, we can write it as d minus b c upon a is equal to zero, or a d minus b c is equal to zero, or we can say a d is equal to b c. So suppose we are having four terms A, B, C, D. So let's take these are in GP. Okay. So B upon A must be equal to C upon B and that must be equal to D upon C. So, okay. So this cross multiplying we get AD is equal to BC. So, since AD equal to BC, it means these A, B, C, D are in GP. These are in GP. So, this is the answer. So, option B is correct. This, this result we got, right? AD equal to BC. Now, we have to check it whether it is in AP or uh, GP or HP. So, I just uh, gone with this. Uh, assuming that these are in GP and we got the correct relation as uh, we derived from the required condition. So these are in GP. A, B, C, D are in GP.
तो मूविंग टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टीन इट इज सेइंग इफ आर एन डिनोट्स द आर 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 अप टू एन डिजिट्स वेर आर इज इक्वल टू वन टू थ्री अप टू नाइन एंड ए इज इक्वल टू सिक्स सफिक्स एन देन बी इक्वल टू एट एन सी इक्वल टू फोर टू एन सो आर एन आर एन डिनोट्स नंबर आर 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 दिस विल बी रिटर्न अप टू एन टाइम्स लाइक एन डिजिट्स आर देयर ओके so uh, we can write uh, 6n as 6 6 6 6 how many times n times like n digits we have to write this 6 n times so this will be our 6n and this is uh, equal to a as per question this this is equal to a okay and what is and it is also saying b is equal to 8 n and c is equal to 4 but in foot it is written 2 n so 2 n times it will repeat this uh, b will repeat this 8 will repeat n times as it was repeating in 6 but c will uh, repeat 2 n times okay first let's uh, solve this a then i think we will get some idea so uh, take 6 common from here like then uh, things under the bracket uh, means within the bracket can be written like this n digits so 6 this number can be like uh, we can re rewrite this uh, number in the bracket as 10 raised to power 0 plus 10 raised to power 1 plus 10 raised to power 2 how many times 10 raised to power n minus 1 because total how many uh, digits are there n digits so uh, it's starting from 0 10 raised to power 0 so it will end uh, so it will end at n minus 1 10 raised to power n minus 1 so this is gp actually right so this is gp having uh, 1 as the first term and 10 as the uh, common ratio so 10 raised to power n minus 1 upon 10 raised to power n minus a r raised to power n minus 1 upon r minus 1 r is 10 10 minus 1 so this is our a let us uh, simplify it so it will be 6 into 10 raised to power n minus 1 upon 9 okay so i think uh, in the similar fashion we can find the value of b also right so b will also become uh, b will become instead of 6 it will come 8 and rest all things are similar only so 8 into 10 raised to power n minus 1 upon 9 so this will be the value of our uh, b right but in a c c the digits are repeating up to two n terms right so we can write c as we can write c as uh, 4 into the only difference will be instead of this n like 2n will come right so 10 raised to power 2n Minus one upon nine. Rest all thing will be same only. So this will be the value of B, and uh, this will be the value of C. Okay. Now what the question is asking? 
then a square plus b plus c equal to 0 or a square plus b minus c equal to 0 a square plus b or oh, a square like every uh, everywhere in every option a square b is there so let's first calculate it a square plus b thing like <clears throat> this a square plus b because it is common to every option no so let's let's uh, check it out so what will be a square a square will be uh, 36 into 10 raised to power n minus 1 upon 9 squared so this will be a square and b b is 8 into 10 raised to power n minus 1 upon 9 okay so we can take 4 4 into 10 raised to power n minus 1 upon 9 common. We can take this common. So what we will be left out with? 4 into 9, right? So uh, this will be 9 and this thing is squared. So it will come one time. 10 raised to power n minus 1 upon 9 and plus 8 so we have taken it will be 2 okay i think i am doing right so 10 raised to power n minus 1 okay so this uh, 9 and 9 will be cancelled out we will have 4 into 10 raised to power n minus 1 upon 9 into this will be 10 raised to power n minus 1 plus 2 this will be plus 1 so it will be 4 into this a minus b a plus b so a square minus b square we can write it as so a square like 10 raised to power 2n a square minus b square minus 1. The things in the numerator I have written here and 9 will be as it is. So I think uh, this was the value of c which we have. Yeah, it is there. Value of c 4 into 10 raised to power 2n minus 1 upon c. So, a square plus b is equal to c. This is equal to c. Means a square plus b is equal to c. This is the relation between a, b and c. This is our answer. a square plus b equal to c. a square plus b is equal to c. a square plus b equal to c. So, option b. Option b is correct. a square plus b minus a equal to 0 or a square plus b equal to c. So we are almost close to this, to the end of this chapter. So 0 0.427 recurring, 0 0.427. 2, 7 are repeating terms. Represent the rational number. Okay. So, uh, suppose this is the value of x. This type of uh, problems we used to do in uh, like class 10. In uh, first chapter, I think, real numbers. So, uh, let's multiply it by 10. 10x. Why multiply it by 10? Because non-recurring figures are, only one figure is non-recurring. So, uh, I am multiplying by 10. So it will become 4.27 and now multiply by 100. Let's suppose it at, uh, as equation 1. Now multiply it by 100. So it will become 1000x is equal to 427.27 and consider it as equation 2. Now subtract equation 1 from equation 2 it will become 990x is equal to 
This will become 427.27 minus 4.27. So this will become 424. So 990x is equal to 424. From here we get x is equal to 424. Oh, this will be 423, no? 423. So 423 upon 990. I think it is divisible by 9. 9. 4 times 36. 6 into 3. That will be 7. 47 upon 110. So option B is correct. Uh, now, coming to the question number 15. This is the last question of this exercise. So, we are at the end. Let's do it fatafat. If the product of three numbers in GP be 216. So, three numbers in GP. So, uh, we prefer considering number as A by R, A and AR. So the product of these numbers are 216 and their sum is 19. So let's take the product A by R into A into A R is equal to 216. So R, R will be cancelled out. It will become A cube is equal to 216. So A we will have as so A is 6. Now their sum is 19. So take, let's take the sum A upon R plus A plus A R is equal to 19. So A is 6. So sorry, 6 by R plus 6 plus 6 R is equal to 19. So Taking R as LCM, we will get 6 plus 6R plus 6R square is equal to 19R. Okay. So it will become 6R square plus 6R minus 19R. It will become minus 13R plus 6 is equal to 0. So, 6, 6, 36. So we can break it as 9 and 4, right? So 6R square minus 9R minus 4R plus 6 is equal to 0. Uh, take 3 are common. From first two terms, it will be 2R minus 3. 6R square minus 9R. Okay. And take minus 2 common from here, it will be minus 2, this will be 2R minus 3 is equal to 0. So 3R minus 2 into 2R minus 3 is equal to 0. So from here we get R is equal to 2 by 3 or R is equal to 3 by 2. These two values of R we are getting. So what it is asking, then the numbers are. So, okay. When R is equal to 2 by 3, our GP will become A means 6 upon R 2 into 3 comma 6 comma A into R. R is 2 by 3. So it will be 9 comma 6 comma 4. Okay, and uh, when R is equal to 3 by 2, I think it will be opposite to it. Let's check it. Our GP will become, that means terms of the GP will be A6 upon R is 3 into 2 comma 6 into 6 into 3 by 2. So it will be 4 comma 6 comma 9. Yeah, 4, 6, 9. So the numbers are 4, 6 and 9. Option A is correct. 
so we are done with this exercise actually the number of questions in this uh, exercise was 15 so uh, it took a long time but we tried to uh, summarize it uh, like close it as early as possible so anyhow the length of the video will be uh, more but can't help with that so uh, okay we are closing this session right now and uh, we will meet again okay tab tak ke liye tata goodbye